If you were to judge Brian Holtzman by the comedian that you see in the clips, or if, if you're lucky you've seen him live, or if you're unlucky you've been one of the people that walked out during his shows. <laughs> I got nothing here with it. Support live comedy. Get off the phone. Stop supporting this damn bogus meme garbage. This week's poll question. Do you prefer stand-up comedy that is more planned or more improvised? Society has shifted to a uh, 1984. Show the f***ing ring girl. East Coast, West Coast, and, and the South. Do you have a preference? Patty Patia Beach, Beach, Thailand. That's my... <laughs> Patia Beach, Thailand. I'm gonna talk about everything that goes on on the blue planet. And if you didn't try to make some light of it, you'd be crying because it was so sad. All the people who don't really think for themselves take that as like, as talking points now. And then they show up to a show of yours. They're like, this guy's a piece of garbage. So long. Oh, you, Bruce. <laughs> Shut it off. Shut it off. Hey, yo, it's Black Zeus, the podcast season five. Welcome to the show where we talk about life. Talk about the come up and sometimes we fight. But in the end, it ain't a thing because we ain't trying to be right. We're just old new niggas with another podcast. Podcast. It's season five, episode forty. Go shut the door, mother lover, cause you know what you win for. We got a good show installed today for you. We got the OG Brian Holtzman in the stew. It's on location, not in the stew. But welcome. This is Black Zeus, the podcast season five. You. Yeah. <laughs> 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 What's going on, beautiful people? I hope y'all are uh, doing all right. I hope you had a great week. I hope your next week is even better than your last. Welcome to another episode of Black Suits, the podcast. We're nearing the end of the year. We're nearing the end of the season. And man, things are just clicking up on the channel. Um, we might have some new people here this week. I wouldn't be surprised if we do. Welcome. Uh, we will be, you know, tossing to the Brian Holtzman interview here in a moment, but... This is Black Zeus, the podcast, and most of the world still doesn't know who the hell Black Zeus is. If you are new to the channel, welcome. Uh, if you're returning, welcome back, beautiful people. You too can be beautiful people. All you have to do is hit the subscribe button, leave a comment, hit the like, whatever, bro. Help us fight Mr. Algorithm. We're not really memers over here, so we don't like to beg. But if you're a fan of comedy, then this is the channel for you. We are a channel run by comedians for comedy fans. No fluff, no memes, none of that BS. We travel around the world, or at least we've started to. We document all that, and we show you guys right here on the channel an authentic, honest look at what it takes to be a comedian on the come up in this day and age. Uh, if you haven't already, new episode of the show, Black Zeus to Show, uh, just launched on Monday on the channel, uh, part B to episode one. Uh, again, you can catch Black Zeus to show full episodes uh, when they air first Monday of every month on Patreon, or you can subscribe right here on YouTube and catch the free episodes every other week. Um, yeah, podcasts. We got we got poll questions we ask every friggin' week. We pretty much focus mostly on comedy. We do some fight talk, and every once in a while we step out of pocket. But yeah. That's what it is. Uh, this podcast though has been running for five years. And it's time to do the damn thing. This is a companion piece to my comedy career where once a week I pop in the studio with Dante, who is on location right now in Denver. Uh, I say on location, but he's not doing anything for the show. He's doing some other cool stuff. Uh, and he'll be back hopefully next week to recap all of that. Um, it's, it's funny, man. I, I'm not going to spoil the surprise for him, but he got to meet someone really cool uh, and spend some time with him. And uh, the same day, over here in Canada, uh, Niagara Falls, Canada, to be exact, uh, the OG Brian Holtzman was weekending at Yuck Yucks, and I took a trip over there, spent some time with him, and I'm very grateful, man. Um, we met him when we were out in Texas, and from the jump, he you can't judge a book by its cover, you know what I'm saying? If you were to judge Brian Holtzman by the the comedian that you see in the clips, or if, if you're lucky you've seen him live, or if you're unlucky, you've been one of the people that walked out during his shows. <laughs> I got nothing here with it. Um, yeah, I don't know how much of this he wants exposed, you know what I mean? But I'm sure people already know. He's the biggest sweetheart, uh, an absolute gem of a human being. 
He treated us like absolute gold. The first day we met him, he brings Dante and I into uh, the mothership alongside uh, my OG, Jason Rouse, who is out in Austin, Texas, uh, killing it. Right now, actually, he's in Europe doing uh, some really cool stuff. Um, yeah, Brian was just amazing from the jump. Treated us like homies and gave us the the true, full VIP experience at the mothership. We were up in the balcony. We pretty much did everything but go into the green room, which, you know, you got to respect that. I am a comic. One day I'll just earn my way in there. That's the actual, you know idea of this <laughs> you still don't know who the hell i am but i'm working on it all right that's what this channel is that's what this podcast has been and just this year we're catching real traction my neck huh uh so once again i do want to thank all the beautiful people that have already been along for the journey that have hit that subscribe that have been commenting all our traction is up it's up 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 Again, we're focused on comedy over here. So if that's what you care about and you're actually genuinely interested to know what the hell it takes, uh, maybe you want to do it. We got interviews with comedians that are famous and not famous all over the channel. Maybe you want to see what it takes. We got Black Zeus to show where we follow me and Dante around, uh, mostly in Canada, but we started to document and we're planning some more trips uh, outside of Canada. Um and yeah, giving you an actual visual look at what it is to be a comedian, taking you backstage and all that good stuff. I'm very excited, man. Like the channel has, no, the channel is finally looking and running and feeling how I, I knew it could, would, and should. But just like open micing, you gotta start somewhere. And maybe that's a good place to start this episode off. Like, yo, if you're just loafing in life and you, you have ideas but I don't know, you feel intimidated or whatever. Um, unless it's comedy, stop. For the love of God, we don't need more. You know what I mean? Unless you're actually committed to comedy. If you want to run up in a friggin' grocery store while some family's shopping and make some stupid meme content, jump off a cliff, please. Um, and... and Great to actually bring this up because I did get to to talk to Mr. Holtzman about this exact topic. If you're new to the podcast, you don't have to look far back um, to to see me or hear me rant or or rave or or say some, you know, from the heart, shoot from the hip type ish about my experiences and what I truly feel about what social media has done to comedy. You don't have to go far. Um, and it was great to actually talk to Holtzman about it, who at first had the opinion, or at least stated the opinion that I feel most people, especially like comics and entertainers, have towards social media. It's a platform and it's a tool that we use to, you know, uh, become known and gain an audience and whatever, whatever, whatever. But there's, I think there's so many, um, there's so much subtext to what social media actually is that I feel like we either outright refuse to look at or refuse to acknowledge or don't even understand what's what's really taking place and it was just great um to be able to have that conversation with a true vet and og someone who's been absolutely around the block uh more than once yeah uh yeah i'm not i'm not going to continue to gush over holtzman because we got the interview shortly i promise you we will bring that up in just a little bit but i'm pretty much going to get all the housekeeping uh out of the way up front and then you can enjoy the conversation with holtzman on the back end of the podcast uh, every week here, we do some stuff called, um, you know, the poll results, and we do a top 10 comedy list. Uh, I'm going to not do that unless Dante's in the studio, because building out the list we've already done. Now it's a matter of uh, opening up to the public and having them help us build out what the actual top 10 all-time comedy greats is. Um, but we'll continue to do that when Dante's back. We also do something called Comedy Recap. Again, this is the companion piece to my comedy career. So every week we hop in the studio and we talk about what we've been doing in the world of comedy, what shows we've been up to uh, and how they went. Thankfully for me, you know, almost 14 years in the game now, most of them are going pretty rock solid. I actually just finished uh, an amazing weekend of shows. Uh, I was at Burlington Yuck Yucks. The Friday was lighter there was like 60 something people i mean the room i think holds 150 to 200 people um so obviously a light night on friday but friday was the tyson fight um and we already saw the results we already saw how the internet feels about that one i don't even need to bring that up 
Whether you think you got rigged or not, bam, you got what you got, and you got a 60-year-old man fighting an influencer. Are we still with the social media stuff? We still want it? Burning hell, man. <laughs> um, but yeah, the first night was, you know, it was what it was. But the crowd, the crowd was good, you know. Um, but every once in a while, you get a crowd that either doesn't know what the hell to do with laughter. <laughs> or it's just like, they just, I don't know, man. Every once in a while, you get an audience that does the start, stop, laugh. It's like, no one's bombing. And what would normally be momentum that gets carried into the next joke just stops once the punchline comes out. You know what I mean? It's like, you're having a really good time. You're having a really good time. You're telling a joke. You're in the middle of it. You're riffing, whatever. And the crowd's with you. And they're laughing. And then as soon as the punchline hits, they laugh and then quiet. And it's like almost a reset to the next joke. And it's very jarring. If you're not a comedian, you don't know what I'm talking about. It's, it's very jarring. Um... Sometimes it is the audience and not you. You know what I mean? But most comics don't, mm, you know, you got, mm, is it, is it the audience or is it you? I don't know. I'm, I'm proving it. I'm displaying it right here on the channel. We're filming the sets. We're, we're showing the highs and the lows, mostly highs. Um, you know what I mean? But there's a lot of perpetrators out there that think they're comedians or like to call themselves comedians, but really they're focused on nothing to do with comedy. Let's make a meme. Bam, 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 bam. <laughs> Um, but the Saturday show at Burlington Yuck Yucks, f -f 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 fire, sold out, packed to the brim, uh, standing room. I saw people get turned away at the door. That's always my favorite thing. And there's like a, a, a buzz in the room when that, that happens. You know what I mean? Every, like, especially when the, the room is packed, everybody in the room starts to anticipate, like it feels like an event. It, and that's what you want. Like you want to walk into a room that has that palpable like buzz and energy and, and vibes that you could like carry and ride like waves. You know what I mean? That was so hippie. But if like, bro, look, I got I got friggin beads and a ring. Like, what do you want? Um, I'm, I've, I've done psychedelics. What do you what do you want? I'm a hippie. All right. Uh I posted some clips from the Saturday show already. I think uh, the shorts are already up on YouTube as well. So if you see a joke on the channel uh, that's talking about no Swifties here, uh, essentially the Friday show was um, not just a Tyson fight, but in Toronto right now, Taylor Swift is in the middle of like a six day completely sold out stadium tour. Um, she sold out the Rogers Center or the Sky Dome if you're old or if you're not Canadian. It's it's just our biggest stadium that we have in the country, essentially. It's like 50,000 people. She sold it out like six times. Um, that's a whole lot of losers right there. <laughs> um, but yeah, like traffic was a mess in Toronto. Just all they shut down streets downtown so people could comfortably walk to this woman's awful music. Uh, but whatever, again, you know, it's all subjective. So my thoughts are also awful. If you like Taylor Swift, then you're weird. But whatever, bro, I guess I respect you. Maybe not your musical choices, but I still respect you. Maybe. I don't know you. So, you know. <laughs> um, but yeah, the Friday show was only competing really. I mean, yeah, another night of Taylor Swift. But the Tyson fight, I think, is what kept a lot of people in the house. And after that, they definitely left the house because they're like, we're not falling for that again. <laughs> what a fire show, man, from top to bottom. I was hosting this weekend, so, you know, it's actually better for me to get clips. When you're hosting, there's no pressure, really, especially if you're good. You're mostly there to make sure the other comics are set up to have the best set they can have and that the the crowd is, is warmed up. Um... But damn, bro, some comics are not built for hosting. I'm so grateful uh, in every position you put me in on that stage, like I'll exceed. You know what I mean? Like it, it, it really has taken time, but every, I don't like hosting as much. Obviously, I would rather be headlining or doing a longer set and like working on my material. But it's not to say you can't work on material when you're hosting. I actually like to work on newer stuff because uh, I feel like it's way easier to just slip in some newer jokes and less pressure too because you're not, you're not the headliner and have to be on fire 24-7. Um, 
Really good riffs with the crowd. Super white town. So, you know, you, you, you know, they, they, they are who they are. <laughs> uh, but I had an absolute blast. I was with Sam Norton and Robert Cackham. Everybody did great. Shout out to the staff at Yuck Yucks Burlington. Um, but yeah, I'm going to leave the comedy recap pretty light this week. This, this week? I'm thinking about weed right now, but I'm, not, I'm sober, you know? I've had a lot of crap going down today, and, uh, you know, I just needed to get this out of the way. And if I had smoked weed, that would have taken more time, and I'd be slow. Um, but we're about to kick off to the Holtzman interview. Before we do that, let me do a little bit more housekeeping. If you are in the Southern Ontario area and you'd like to check me out live, these are the places where you can do that. This is a, a big week. Big week. For your boy Zeus uh, in the comedy landscape, not only are you watching this episode right now with Brian Holtzman on the podcast, uh, on the 22nd, I will be in Tilsonburg as part of Different Nights, and I'll be working out the last kinks before the 24th at Nubian Show, my absolute favorite show, the best show in the country, in my opinion. It's the closest thing Canada has to Deaf Comedy Jam. Kenny Robinson's Nubian Disciples of Richard Pryor, the last Sunday of every month, downtown Toronto at Yuck Yucks. You can catch that this Sunday. Uh, I'll be I'll be doing some some good some good amount of time there, uh, and I'll be headlining uh, two shows at Stage West Comedy in Toronto on the 29th. Uh, again, just ironing out the last of the kinks before we get to the 30th. Saturday, November 30th, at the Corner Comedy Club, downtown Toronto. I will be doing a live taping. And you know what's fun? I still haven't really fully decided exactly what I want to do. And I'm 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 comfortable, like oddly comfortable with that. Because I've, you know, at this point I've proven out that I can walk into a scenario and, and smash it out of the park. Especially when... Um, there's like stakes. And it's not like they're real stakes. There's stakes that I created. I'm doing a taping. But momentum, right? Everything is about momentum. And what, what uh, a great way, I think, to keep the momentum going. Uh, I might as well start promoting some December shows while we're here. Uh, da -da 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 -da. The 13th and the 14th, I will be at Yuck Yucks in London, returning to Yuck Yucks in London. The 20th and the 21st of December, I'll be at Yuck Yucks Niagara, which is where Brian Holtzman was this past weekend. Uh, so you can check me out there. And on the 27th of December, I will be in London, Ontario at 38 Adelaide Street. Uh, I don't have the venue name right now, but I'll, I'm, I'm going to promote that again. So don't worry. Uh, but that's closer to the end of the year. And we're pretty much getting there. You know what I mean? We're wrapping the year up. And... Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's where you can catch me live. If you can't catch me live, if you're not in the area, wherever you are in the world, go check out live comedy. Support live comedy. Get off the phone. Stop supporting this damn bogus sketch meme garbage where they're like, hey, I make goofy ass videos every day and that's what I spend my time and effort and focus on. But I'm also a comedian and I'm running a comedy show. So now that I have all this clout and fame on social media, I can charge you a ton of money for tickets to come watch me perform live stand-up comedy and bomb. Y'all suck. We about comedy on this side and wherever you are, I promise you the next best greatest comedian is in your neighborhood and they just need your support. Bam. That's it. Uh, so yeah. That's this week's comedy recap. Let's get into a weekly segment here called Poll Results. Every Tuesday on my Instagram story feed and on the community tab on YouTube, we post an interactive poll question. We leave it up for you guys to vote, and then we discuss the results right here on the podcast. Dante's not with me here this week, so I'll make this short and sweet, and then you can get on over to that Brian Holtzman interview, baby. No timestamps. You're going to have to figure it out yourself. But this week's poll question. Do you prefer stand-up comedy that is more planned slash scripted or more improvised? And the options were highly planned slash scripted, uh, more improvised, an even mix, or no preference. Now, for me personally, and I guess what I do on stage is also what I prefer to see on stage. Uh, I like an even mix. I mean, I don't, I don't need you to be up there being profound 24-7. 
But I also don't really want to sit down and watch an hour and a half headline of someone just tell dick and fart jokes. Get away from me. Um, like challenge me in some way. Let me see that you actually got a brain and that you can make something serious really funny. That to me is my favorite stuff. I mean, I don't have Carlin on the wall right now. I put Kaufman on the wall specifically because uh, Holtzman and Kaufman, in my mind, they're linked. And you can actually see when we went to Texas, uh, like a couple months ago on the podcast, right here on the channel, you, you'll see the comedy mothership as the thumbnail. Um, we got an interview with Brian already on the channel. If you haven't seen that, that's when we first met him and he gave us an awesome, awesome interview. Uh, maybe I'll even put some of that in the preview for this episode. Uh, but you can go check that out on the channel. Um, but yeah, like to me, what Kaufman represents in comedy, I, I feel like uh, Brian Holtzman is in that same vein. Um, very avant-garde, do what you want. Not what you, the audience, do do what he wants. Um, unapologetic and doesn't, doesn't care or is not afraid to walk a room if it means he's being his authentic self. And I think there's a lot to learn and take away from that. I, I don't really resonate with comedians that are just up there doing one or the other. I don't like a preachy comedian either, you know, and this is, this is something that I'm always battling and, and discussing with Dante or just ranting about on the podcast or just with comics in life. Like comedy is comedy, bro. It's about funny point blank period. So don't go up there on a soapbox and try and make points forever without, you know, giving the audience something. But I'm also the type of person that is a, a philosophical type comedian, like George Carlin is top tier for me. And I do have really deep thoughts. I am a philosophical thinker and talker. And what better challenge for me, also being a really goofy person, is to find the, the balance and the blend between the two. Finding that rhythm or finding a cadence to where you can go from something super serious to something really goofy and vice versa and just like back and forth like that, bro, that's, there's a real nuanced, subtle art to that. You know what I mean? And it takes a lot of practice. And again, almost 14 years in, it'll be 14 years in March. So I'm grateful that I'm at that point, but it's also fun. Dante's not here right now, but we've been documenting his come up and it's been really interesting to see him steadily progress and, and, click up uh, yeah man I, I wish he was here for this but again he's doing some some good stuff himself um so yeah this week's poll question before we get too far away from it do you prefer stand-up comedy that is more planned scripted or more improvised mm, like i do also think like i don't know what's t harder you know i can't actually even for myself i couldn't tell you if I think riffing is harder, like riffing with the crowd or going off the cuff or off script um, or being planned and scripted. I, I really couldn't tell you because for me, I've approached comedy in such an eclectic way that, again, this has all been documented on the podcast over the years. But when I first started, like the, the first thing I focused on before even making sure my jokes were the best was transitions. I don't know why, but I was super fixated and just like fascinated with comedians that were able to just move from joke to joke without even making you realize that, whoa, I'm like an hour into this special already. I think the comic that really, like the more modern comic that really made me start to notice is Louis C.K. Um, when I watched live at the Beacon Theater, that special, I remember he did what I thought at the time was a riff. Um, and then it wasn't even like I saw Louie confirm it or anything like in, a, in an interview or a podcast or anything like that, that he wasn't riffing, that it was planned. But having done it enough since then myself and having seen it enough, like comics do that at an elite level, I understood completely. The best comics, man, will make it seem like they just walked on stage, picked up a mic, and just started talking. And that's what I try and emulate. You know what I mean? I want it to be a conversation with me and the room. You just happen to be sitting in on a conversation that, in my mind, is actually taking place one-on-one. -on -one. If you can get to that place on stage, you're golden. And you will go super far in this business. If you're, if you're not, 
and you don't eventually get there over time, don't worry, you can still get far in this business. All you have to do now is start making memes. Burn in hell. <laughs> Burn in comedy hell. It's welcome to my TikTok. It's Mondays. You know what that means? Fart Monday. <laughs> and guess what? Most of the people on earth are losers and they like that. <laughs> Uh, so let's wrap up this week's poll question and get to the results. Once again, this week's poll question, do you prefer stand-up comedy that is more planned slash scripted or more improvised? The options were highly planned slash scripted, more improvised, an even mix, or no preference. And the results are... 11% said highly planned and scripted, 16% more improvised, 68% an even mix and 5% no preference. Um, shout out to the people with no preference, just going in raw dog and comedy. Like, I'm just going to watch whatever. And then you're freaking 40 minutes of the way through freaking Joe Blow's comedy special dump extravaganza. <laughs> I think, I think this poll question. Like, I'm not surprised by these results at all. 68% are on the even mix. That's just the logical response to that. Um, it's it's odd. To, I always find it odd, though, like the 11% that prefer. What is it that you prefer about highly scripted and planned comedy? I ha Even before I started comedy, never has comedy resonated with me where it's been a comic going on stage doing jokes in a set list order. Like, not really worrying about, like, okay, it works if you're doing good transitions and stuff, but there's so many comics that just, like, joke A, joke B, joke C, joke D, call back to A, joke E. I'm like, nigga, are you a substitute teacher, bruh? What, you, what is this? You know what I mean? Um, but I'm also fascinated by comedians and I know a couple, not too many. I feel like it's a uh, dying art this th these days, but um, comics that go word for word off a of script, I don't even know how you do it. That's bonkers to me. I've, I've never told my, my best jokes twice the same way. I just know the, the, the beats, the major beats that I need to hit, and I like to tailor it or give at least some form of a unique version of that joke to the audience that I'm in front of at that time. That's why the whole planned improvised thing, like the whole planned scripted thing isn't really for me because it's way too rigid. And I was just talking about this on last week's podcast. Um, but yeah, that's going to do it for this week's poll results. That's going to do it for me in the studio. Honestly, um, I'm really grateful for you guys. I thank you. If you're new to the channel and you are a comedy fan, please hit that subscribe button. If, if, if you know, I'm not, I'm going to stop right there. If you're a comedy fan, though, don't come here looking for memes and looking for green screen videos where we're talking over other people doing. The Internet sucks. Remember when it was good? Well, this is a good part of the Internet right here. We got the legend, the OG, Brian Holtzman on location at Niagara Falls in his hotel room. Uh, before we get to the interview, last thing here, I just want to let you guys know it's on location. We were planning to film it inside the club, which had better lighting, um, but we had to call an audible. So we recorded it in a hotel room. The lighting might not be the greatest, but it is way more than passable. And you guys will absolutely still get a kick out of and enjoy the interview. So without further ado, thank you guys once again. This has been Black Zeus, the podcast season five. And enjoy a conversation with Brian Holtzman. I've had enough to hear with it. Friends of Holtzman, bitch. Friends of Holtzman. What's going on, beautiful people? We are here at Niagara Falls, sitting in a hotel room with the illustrious Brian Holtzman. Brian, how are you, my man? Oh, just fine. Thank you so much for your time. I do appreciate it. I can never tell, um, like every time we speak, you, you, <laughs> your, your demeanor from where you're on stage to off stage, I can't tell if you're always on 
Or if you turn it on when you... You mean always agitated? <laughs> I guess that's the word. Is that the word you're looking for? Yes. Agitated? I just want to let you know before we start, uh, I don't shut this phone off. That's fine. This if phone, if this phone may go off, I may... Uh, Answer it. ...need to communicate with somebody at any time. I don't shut this phone off uh, for, for anyone. What if you're like... Uh, Okay, fair enough. If your brother calls, I would. Can I pick it up? Oh yes. I know he. I've been on a, in a club when your brother called and you just randomly answered. We should call my brother Jay and see <laughs> if he would uh, speak with us. Are you guys close? Very close. What's his influence on your comedy, if at all any? Uh, he gives he gives me some funny things to say from time to time. There's no doubt about it. He told me that uh, the outcome of the election is uh, really. Uh, Upset him. <laughs> he's a he's a Kamala supporter. And uh, oh yes, and uh, he says the only way that he can sleep at night is if he shoots heroin. Oh Jesus! Yeah, that's a. Uh... So I thought that was very funny, and uh, some people don't, <laughs> including yourself, since you didn't laugh. Um, <laughs> okay, how, like how do you how do you react when people like? Do you have a type of reaction you're looking for, or you just don't care? Because I feel like... It's for the people who get it. If they have to understand where yeah. I'm coming from. If they don't get me and my... And it's very difficult. But I, at the end of the day, I can't care. I have to say what I think is funny. And everybody else who doesn't think it's funny or doesn't get it or think it's terrible, that's their business. That's on them. They mm -hmm. have to figure out why they're so terribly upset with... With, with this planet and in there. This is a beautiful big. This beautiful blue planet that we live on and everything is so terribly uh, uh, offensive and confusing and hurtful to them. Then they should just kill themselves. <laughs> you know, you, you don't deserve to be here. You know, you know you're uncomfortable. Everything mm. I talk about comes off the beautiful blue planet. And I'm just terribly sorry that everything is so upsetting to you. Like they're the boss of everything. Like they're in charge of everything. You know, you know, no one gives a hoot what you think. Unfortunately, I think social media has kind of changed people's perception on that. I think everybody thinks people care what they think now. It's I guess. I mean, uh like everybody has a voice now, whereas opposed to like when I first, I started 13 years ago in comedy and I didn't have to be a social media guru to be a comedian, but now it's, the landscape is completely flipped and you have to have a social media presence. You pretty much, for me, I feel like I have to do everything I don't want to do. I love comedy and I just want to focus on comedy, making people laugh on well, stage. Well, the phone and social media is part of that. I guess it is, you I, you're right. I feel like there's almost a subtle, um, like you don't technically have to do any of this stuff, right? But how do you build an audience in this day and age if you're not a part of that social media, constantly putting stuff out? Well, well traditionally you got an agent or a manager mm -hmm. and they put you out, you sign with them, they tell you how to dress, tell you what to do and uh, uh, promote you. But since social media came along, it, 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 it nullified all those individuals, those highfalutin individuals, agents and managers and what have you, mm -hmm. entertainment lawyers, and it nullified them to the point where they, they're not less or not as important or unimportant to a, a, an aspiring artist, uh, his aspirations in show business. So it's kind of good, you know, you do it on your own, you get a following, and you uh, take it from there. I agree with, I see like, it's hard to disagree with what you're saying. Cause I 100% I agree with that. And I can't say that that's wrong. From my personal experience though, it's like I've watched so many of my friends who only wanted to do stand up, who now have to figure out what their online voice is. And it's taken so much attention away from their stand-up that their stand-up suffers, but now they're building an audience based off of something that they didn't care to present in the first place. And that's, the, that's been the challenge for me. Because I think you're right, it is a tool, but I feel maybe there's a pressure now in comedy to where we all have to be complete buffoons. Or, or not, maybe, not, maybe not buffoons, because there's a place for that in comedy. 
Like, you know, there's dick and fart jokes is absolutely a requirement or or has its place. But I, I, I personally feel like now, like I gotta go to a Walmart and follow a family on a Tuesday and and yell behind, oh yeah, we're not talking about that. That's, when I make my presentations, I have to be very careful not to point this iPhone 12 Max Pro at anybody's face. <laughs> because of those people that are punking people mm. and getting in people's uh, personal space and, and scaring people and, and, and just doing horrible things to people when they're just uh, going about their everyday life. And they're the people that are ruining it. For, for real YouTubers who are just trying to show people something that maybe they live in uh, Switzerland that'll never see Niagara Falls. Yeah. And, and stuff like that. So the, the buffoonery and the trickery and the punking have, have, have diminished uh, the attractiveness of, 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 of social media or uh, blogging to a great extent. And they're trying to be funny and you can't try, you, you know, you can't, Mm -hmm. manufacture somebody to make a laugh it has to be genuine it has to be organic and a lot of people of course are missing missing the mark on that and uh but uh you so you do it in your own fashion you don't it has to come from a genuine place right yeah you and, know and that's that that's that's the challenge of it that i love i i feel like it's taken me i've been on social media since the beginning but it's only now that i'm really catching traction because i'm presenting myself authentically I only care about comedy, so then I finally realized, like, why am I trying to play that game as opposed to just present comedy? Like, so now all my, like, my interviews with comedians, my podcasts solely talk about comedy. And it's, it's slowly building traction. I don't know if it'll be as wide stream or as mainstream as, like, something like that can get, you know, like. I like, feel like, like uh, Jake Paul mm. or Paul Jake or whatever his <laughs> name is. Yeah. yeah. Uh, How would you feel about the Tyson fight, by the way? It was, he was afraid, of, uh, Jake Paul was afraid of getting knocked out. Tyson was old. Yeah, his legs were there. And they just danced around. It was uneventful. It should have been 10 rounds at least, not eight. A knockout is what everybody wanted, whether it was Jake Paul being knocked out or Mike Tyson being knocked out. That's what we wanted. Yeah. We did not want a decision. And this has happened before. I don't know uh, the time that Mike Tyson fought, uh, fought Larry Holmes, I think he bit his ear. So we were all set for a great fight. That was over in no time at all. Are you a big fight fan? And that's why boxing has lost, uh, oh, I was. Yeah. But it's terribly fixed, it's terribly crooked, it's terribly mm. uh, theatricals, and that's why people are so attracted to the MAA. Is that, what is it? MMA. MA, what is it? MMA. MMA, because yeah. it's real, it's not fixed, kill or be killed, and it's not as bad as it looks. One of the, uh, one of the uh, fighters can tap out at any time yeah. and say, I've had enough. Boxing, yeah, they don't pummel you until you... I don't know how many boxing matches have been uh, thrown or the decisions have been uh, unworthy of the outcome. Uh, somebody on the phone told me today that the women, the two lesbians that were fighting... Uh, <laughs> that decision went uh, in the wrong direction. Oh, so, before the Tyson fight. Right, yeah, okay. some of the uh, undercards. And uh, so boxing has had its problems. I mean, it, it's just, uh, you know, these big promoters get involved and it's, uh, it's suspicious and people don't want suspicious. Interesting. So um, uh, boxing has got its problems and as a result of those problems, uh, the popularity of of, of boxing is is nothing compared, I think, to MMA. No, that's why you have to bring in like a Jake Paul now and bring a Mike Tyson out of retirement to and get anybody to put eyes on boxing. But I don't know who's the, whose idea was it to make eight rounds. Yeah. All this hype, all this money, all these people. I think Jake Paul is getting forty million. Uh, Mike Tyson is getting twenty million. You can't make them do fifteen. <laughs> Go all the way till somebody just can't take it anymore and they're on their ass on the mat. I mean, let key, you know, but it's it's the same thing with the ring the ring girls. They wouldn't show the they ring girls. Show the ring girls. <laughs> I mean, that was what boxing was all about, to show the ring girls. They don't want to Netflix is like a bunch of pansies. Uh, I think while you were on stage, 
they did an interview of Mike Tyson in the back, and then he walked away from the I camera. Did you see that? this? Everybody saw yeah. that. Uh, uh, There's your Mike, ring girls. Mike Tyson's, uh, yeah, they'll show the ring, uh, Mike Tyson's uh, derriere, but they won't show the ring girls. I mean, growing up, that's what you wanted to see. They would, they would, somebody would hold the rope up, up, and the ring girl would get in with the big, big breast, and you know, and then, oh, this is round number one or two or three. Netflix thought that was unimportant. Yeah. So the whole, the whole, the whole society has shifted to, to a 1984. Show the fucking ring girls. You know. Big Show brother, the ring girls. Big brother doesn't want you to see titties. Do you like do you like fake tits? And tits and little tits. asses. Tits you know, tits. tits are tits. You know, I, I'm not a doctor. You know, if I see tits, I'm not I'm gonna examine them to see if they're real or not. Show the ring girls. <laughs> no, they'd rather show the corner work. Yeah. And you can see the ring girl in the background kind of like get, you know, it's it was just terribly disappointing. Eight rounds? <laughs> Eight rounds? Who said eight rounds? Why don't you just make it two rounds? Why don't you make it three rounds, like in the Olympics? You should have went 15 to one of those characters, knocked the other character out. That's what the crowd wanted. Yeah. Instead, they just danced, and they danced, and Jake Paul looked like he was afraid of a knockout punch, so he was apprehensive. The old man was the old man. He did what he could just to not get knocked out. Jake Paul should have been on him. And then the last 20 seconds, they hung it up. <laughs> he was doing some kind of homage to him. And uh, so it was, it was billed as an uh, exhibition. Yeah. But a very poor exhibition at that. And again, the public is, is the loser. You know. It's, it's all hype and then eventually yeah, fizzles out into nothing. You know, the best part was Tyson slapping him at the way in <laughs> You know? I feel like that's everything nowadays, though. Everything's built up through hype and then it never really pays off. You know? It's terrible. You mentioned uh, growing up a little bit in the midst of that. Um, you're from Long Island, yes? That's Long where Island, Wantor, and, Levittown. And then... Uh, South Shore, yeah. And then Cali? Redondo Beach, Los Angeles, Pink Dot, La Cienega and Sunset. Okay, and now Texas. Austin, Texas, Oak Hill. <laughs> so East Coast, West Coast, and, and the South. Do you have a preference? What, what type of living Patia do you prefer? Beach, Thailand. That's my, <laughs> that's my preference. Patia Beach, Thailand. P-A-T-T-A-Y-A. -A. Uh, could you expound on that? Why, why do you like Thailand so much? Because it's wonderful. It's like you can stay in a hotel there for a whole month and it will be less than 500 US dollars. The food is delicious. All sorts of food. For ve you know, it's just, you don't feel like you're being taken. In the West, you're being taken. You're constantly being taken. Somebody is constantly in your pocket with exuberant prices for everything. And in Thailand, it's not like that. Mm. Now, you know when somebody says they like to go to Thailand, there's a bunch of connotations with that. Yeah? They can have all the connotations they want. <laughs> I brought my girlfriend with me because she loves it. She wanted, I said, go on YouTube and look at Thailand, look yeah. at Patia Beach. And you'll see why I love it so much. And we had a great time. She don't care about bar girls. That's, that's just the culture. The lady boys, they don't care about lady boys. There's no, <laughs> you know how America is like, oh, you're, you're, a f or you're, you're a tranny and you're, they don't care. It's just so civil, the same thing in the Philippines. They don't care if you're a lady boy, if you're a homosexual, if you're this or you're that. They simply, don't care, they're busy living a life. That's true, I guess. They're not preoccupied with who you are and what you're doing. And they're friendliest people in the world. Uh, it's hot as hell, but it's hot as hell everywhere. <laughs> you know, the, the, the temperature's rising. It's, wherever you go in the world, it's hot. So I don't care, the temperature doesn't bother me. I like the rain and it's, and, uh, uh, and I like it, I like it. <laughs> I enjoy it. I have friends that live over there as expatriates oh, really? that I expats, look up. Yeah. Expats, Expats. I've been going. My brother Jay took me there in 1988, the first time to uh, Thailand. And I went to, uh, I went to uh, when I was stationed in the United States Air Force, I was stationed in Okinawa, Japan. Oh, wow. So I've always had a, a likeness 
for the Southeast Asia. Okay. I mean, it's completely a different house than the Western uh, way of life. And I, I like it a lot. It, you know, it's just, uh, who wouldn't like it? You've never heard anybody say that came back from Thailand or even the Philippines and said, wow, I had a lousy time. That place <laughs> sucks, you know. You're not wrong. So uh, I, don't, I don't know if everybody's going there for the same reasons, though. That's up to them. Yeah, people are but people. But they're all having a good time. They go for that. You know, where else can a 60, 70-year-old guy have a 19-year-old girlfriend? So you like traveling. And then, it, and another thing, too. If, you, if you're old and you yeah. have a young girlfriend, you're a pervert. <laughs> nah, right? yeah. Right? But if you're an old guy and you have a lot, a lot of money and you have a 19-year-old girlfriend, all of a sudden it's okay because you have a lot of money. money. So it's a double standard. It's all bullshit. Yeah. You know? They, they want to make money. You're a source of income for them. And uh, it's just the way it is. There's nothing dirty about it. It's, there's, it's dirty here in America, yet every hotel room you're in, you've got uh, pornographic uh, access to pornographic... Uh, uh, videos and yeah. movies so it's a big it's a big falsehood you know uh, it's very western too it's like when you go to over to europe oh, or asia it's very or any safe that, like, it's very uh clean it's it's very western it's more uh, uh sophisticated than the philippines in a lot of areas mm. and the uh security is a much better in thailand uh, and it's wherever you go uh, 11 o'clock the lady you stay out wherever you are in the world not everywhere, uh, you'll run into more problems the later you stay in the evening because that's where all the crackheads come out at night. I mean... And the drugs and the drunks and all the shenanigans. Uh, so... You're in Austin now, so 6th Street is pretty much that every night, no? 6th Street is great. The only thing missing from 6th uh, Street is, uh, is the bar girls. Interesting. Got everything else except the bar girl. But doesn't it get dicey after like what is it, one o'clock in the morning, like twelve thirty? Like it, it can get it can get dicey. I mean, they've had some incidents there, but everybody's got uh, you know in Thailand, everybody's got free access to sex if they want. <laughs> so there's nobody mad dogging everybody. Yeah. Everybody's happy. Everybody's walking around. There's no loose, relaxed. You know, you get the avid, you get the occasional drunk expat who causes problem, doesn't want to pay his bill, whatnot, mm. and he'll get his ass uh, thoroughly kicked by twenty ties. But uh, everybody's wonderful. Nobody's mad dogging anyone like in the West, and uh, there's no tension. Everybody's having a good time and enjoying themselves. And I guess that's why I like it so much. In addition to going on a holiday, yeah. And not, you know, and not cost you thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. Two-part question here. You, you do like traveling, it sounds like. Oh, yeah? yes. I've been to quite a number of uh, places, uh, uh, fascinating places. Uh, so in a lot of your podcast interviews or, like, uh, appearances, I've even heard you on stage say, yesterday at, at Yucks, this is why you don't uh, do road gigs. But if you like to travel, how come those two you think have never met? Like, how come you don't like to do road gigs as much? Road gigs are tough because if you don't have a following, and I don't know how much of a following I have, I know it isn't great, then if you have a following and everybody's coming to see you, then it's, it, 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 it's icing on the cake. Mm. They know you. They know what they can expect from you. And you give them yourself in its uh, organic, uh, authentic form. Now, if you go to a club and they don't know you, or they, you know, then you have to convince them that you, 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 you have to validate yourself to them, and you have to. And a lot of times, they won't get you. They're used to setups and punchlines and segues. And comedy's been taking a hit. It's like they want to ruin comedy. It's unbelievable. They can go to every movie theater and see Tarantino movies and all sorts of horror movies and, and like Chainsaw Massacre. They watch or The Walking Dead on a cable, yeah. you know, where they're hitting people with baseball bats wrapped in uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, barbed wire. And they can see sex, they can see violence, real heavy duty, uh, nauseating violence, not funny violence. I like Tarantino because his violence makes you laugh because it's so over the top mm -hmm. and it takes the sting away. 
But some people like to see violence. They like to see uh, curse words and sex and just explosions and, 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 and so, all sorts of horrific things. And they just sit there and they just watch the movie. They don't throw anything at the screen. They don't complain. They don't demand their money back. They don't get upset. They don't take it personal. They just watch the movie. But when they come into a comedy store or a comedy club, they, there's some kind of disconnect where they, they take the comic verbatim. What's mm. the word? Uh, verbatim. Verbatim? Yeah. And they take it personal. And it, it just, just watch it just like you would watch a movie. Mm. Just watch it like a movie. Just watch the movie. But they get in, they get involved in the movie. <laughs> they get involved in the movie and they start thinking, you know, oh, he's talking about child trafficking. I'm gonna talk about everything that goes on on the blue planet. And if you didn't try to make some light of it or maybe make some fun of it or make some jokes about it, you'd be crying because it was so sad. Mm. And they just don't get it because they've been programmed not to get it. Somewhere along the line, the religious organizations, the colleges, the, uh, the grade schools, uh, uh, you know, the government, the media, Somebody's gotten these to these people where yes. they hear a certain word and they they're like children They're just like children. Can I pause for a second to go back to something we were talking about earlier? This it, this is what I feel like the impact of social media has done it has taken something like comedy which used to be kind of more narrow than what it is now, but it has spread it out and people think comedy is what they see when they're scrolling the dumb stuff and then they show up with that mindset and they're not even understanding of what a comedian really is. That's what I truly feel social media is complete, is it's almost like uh, muddied the waters. It's devalued what people actually consider to be comedy, in my opinion. And from what I That's see- That's a good point there. Didn't Jerry Seinfeld tell us he doesn't want to do colleges anymore? All the woke stuff, like the woke crowds and stuff that constantly pop up. Where else are they? Maybe not getting it from, but these are the platforms that they're at least expressing it on, and, and that's where the narrative really gets to the masses. The politicians say some crap on TV, but then that clip gets clipped out and put on social media, and then all the people who don't really think for themselves take that as like as talking points now, and then they show up to a show of yours, they're like, this guy's a piece of garbage because he's saying all this shit, but they can't separate themselves. They, they, they don't. They come into the club yeah. and they bring their toxic belief it's systems bullshit. with them. Yeah. And you know, I, I went to the park one day because I wanted to do an experiment. That's why we love children so much because they don't have any racism. They have no conceived conceptions. They have no um, uh, uh, axes to grind. Mm -hmm. They have no, uh, nobody's gotten to them yet and influence them in a negative way. They're open-minded and they're happy about everything. I went to the park and there was a, I think there was a three or four, maybe a five-year-old. And I just said, you know, you, you, you're a fat-faced little fuck, you know? <laughs> your, your parents are assholes and you're an asshole and I don't like what you're wearing today. And you know what that little child did? What did they do? He just, he clapped his hands and coo and coo. <laughs> Didn't bother him. Didn't bother him a bit. Nothing. No prejudice here. Smiled at you. I said, you know, you're fat. You're a fat baby, I told him. I said, you know, I bet you got flat feet, you know? And uh, he was happy. He didn't, he didn't bother him a bit. The complete opposite of adults going into a comedy club. and Like they're the boss of tra yeah. child trafficking. They're the boss of... They're the boss of... Uh, 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 handy, you know, people don't laugh at handicapped jokes. Mm -hmm. You don't think people in a wheelchair don't have a sense of humor? They can't walk. That doesn't mean they can't laugh. You know, you're not laughing because you're feeling sorry. I mean, all you do is feel sorry, sorry, yeah. sorry, sorry. It must be terribly terribly morose way to go through life feeling sorry for every bad thing you hear or every word 
even in a comedy club. Yeah. There's, there's no place anymore. I mean, who would want to live with somebody who didn't get humor? Basic comedy humor. Yeah. Or you shouldn't talk like that. You shouldn't talk like that. Damn, I, you know, you know, what am I going to talk about? How you lose a sock in the dryer? <laughs> Is that what you want to hear? Yeah, How you me. lose a sock in the dryer? I adore you, Brian. Honestly, like when I saw you in Texas, I cannot, ex I told you this a little bit through messaging, but. I can't express to you enough how just eye-opening and resetting seeing you perform was for me specifically. I came back with a renewed understanding of absolutely be unapologetically yourself on stage. Like the audience doesn't know what they want until you deliver something for them. And then they either, you know, accept it or they don't. But that up after that, it's 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 all good. But if you're going up there and trying to placate and not being your authentic self. Pander to. Bingo. Like, you're not really doing anything at that point. Sure, you're amassing an audience and you can make some money, absolutely, but what the fuck are you actually doing? To me. And, and that's why I'm so indebted to what I got to witness. And it was Thank weird. you. Yeah, I'm, I'm very grateful for you. I know Should you we try to see if Jay will answer the phone? Let's do it. Would you like that? I know you're gonna have to leave soon. Um, uh, let's see if my brother Jay will answer the phone. He's uh, a very eclectic. He's a very e eclectic. Uh, he's also in Texas with you, or no? He lives on Long Island in. Uh, oh, he's still in New York. Okay, in, in Cavalton, and uh, let's see if Jay will uh, pick up the phone. And uh, you're gonna have to put him on speaker. Oh yes. Jay Holtzman on the line, potentially. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why they want to beat up comedy so bad. They're just trying to beat it up. They just won't leave it alone. They're I don't think they want to, though. I just think they're moving with, they're just moving with the times. People say beat up comedy now. So the, the people who don't have a brain or think for themselves say, okay. And then the next thing will be beat up music again, or beat up whatever, rap, or... Hi, if he's... Please leave your message. I'll call Time you right back. That. At the tone, please record your... Hey, he didn't pick up. That's fair. Let me... Try, you want to try this character witness? We'll ask him what he thinks about... Uh, where is he? Come on. You are the definition of don't judge a book by its cover. If anybody were to think... It's like, oh, I, I like, I'm afraid to approach Brian because they see you on stage. It's like, what a, what a joke. You're one of the, you're a gem. It's all about the audience. That's why we're doing it. People say, do you mind if I take your, f you know, these movie stars that are on the big screen all over the world and then they wonder why people want to take their picture. <laughs> yeah, no. People want to f go after them. You're, you're an international movie star. There's something that comes along with that. Yeah. You know, this uh, Alec Baldwin fight with... Call has been forwarded to an automated... No one's picking up. Do you hand out stuff after every show? Because I noticed Not you always... Not every show. Okay. Uh, shows, that, uh, it's shows that are my shows. Okay. Uh, and uh, But, uh, you know, these people are crazy, you know. If you're nice to the parat... Uh, parat oh, here's, here he is. Hello, sir. What do you want? I was just taking the garbage out. What? Yeah, I'm on a podcast here, and I want to know if you want to uh, tell us what you think about, uh, I guess, uh, the election, the, 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 the Democrats, if you want to. You, you, you know, this is live. I'm doing a little podcast. Hello, figured, Bruce. Hello. Say hello to Bruce. How are you, Bruce? I'm Zeus. You want to say anything? Zeus. Zeus. You want to say anything? You say anything, anything you want to say. Well, just hang up. I don't care. What do you want to do here? America, America is back. <laughs> hey, number one. The fucking Democrats are the Confederates. And I don't trust them. Right. And I'll never vote for a Democrat again. Right. What about what about your brother Jay? I would want I don't want to be in a foxhole with him. Right, I wouldn't either. Oh, thanks for calling. <laughs> yeah, go fuck 
fuck yourselves. Have a nice day. <laughs> Take care, Bruce. So long. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, fuck you, Bruce. <laughs> uh, I don't want to take up too much of your time. I know you got to get to a mass here. Uh, how much of an influence does religion play in your life? Actually, I'm very interested to know that. Yeah, I'm really upset with people uh, that throw religion under the bus. Mm. You know, they say heaven or, or heaven or hell. That's, that's neither here nor there. We're all hoping for something that's next, whether it's in reincarnation or special place who knows but that's besides the point religion for me is how I treat people while I'm here on earth and this is what people miss the message I get from religion is just be nice to people do what you would want people to do to you mm. who could in their right mind argue with that premise mm. unless they have an agenda and some people say things and do things because they want to uh, maximize their prominence, whether it in show business or what have you. So they'll say things that are just silly. Bill Maher is a great example. Oh, he's so uh, religion, organized religion. Fine, Bill. You don't believe? You don't have that faith? You think we came out of the ocean in the sea pod? Fine. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Leave it alone. You shouldn't even be talking about it. Let pe I mean, he had a film where he went to Rome and yeah. threw it under the bus. Uh, you know, what, what is your agenda? Are you trying to hurt everybody's feeling that has a faith? Faith to me only just makes me a happier, friendlier, a person with empathy for other people. Mm. For people that have less than us or me. That's all it is for me. At the core, that's all they all are. Isn't that funny? Christianity, Islam, uh, Judaism, Buddhism, Taoism, whatever, Hindu. At the core, they're all saying the same thing. And the, and, uh, and the Bible and the Quran have some of the same characters in, in their literature. And it's just, it could, it could have been a control thing to control, you know, it could have been, it could have been a lot of things. But you, like they say, you don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Mm. You take what's uh, acceptable, you take what's uh, fortunate, you take what's attractive, you take what's useful. But to just throw it all under the bus, you know, uh, it's, it's juvenile. I think so too. So You're missing the whole point. Did you know there's 16 different uh, Christ figures before Christ showed up? Like in, in India, Krishna, same, virgin birth. Like if you look at the stories, they're identical. Jesus was an African American. If, I mean, I'm Ethiopian. So if you want to say they're Hebrew, right? The, the Hebrew Israelites of the Bible, or not Israelites, but you know. You know what? That uh, would be that region. Do you know what a sesame seed on an Ethiopian's forehead is? <laughs> what is it, Brian? Lunch. <laughs> Lunch. Well, thanks for having me, buddy. Thank you for being Hopefully here. Hopefully, tonight's. Uh, uh, show will be uh, a little bit uh, um, handled a little bit better. We did our best and, uh, you know, comedy, uh, they can't laugh if they don't get it. Hell no. And what What is like a final, for somebody who's never seen you before and maybe just heard about you, like what, what is something that, you, do you care about legacy? Do you care about? Oh how? no, nobody, nobody, legacy is another myth. Ego. Uh, legacy is, uh, I've, uh, you know, there, there are people that are still alive today that young people don't know who they are. Mm -hmm. Legacy is a myth. Everybody that we know today is going to be gone. Nobody knows anything. The history books have been sanitized. Everything has been manipulated. The people with all the guns run the, uh, run the nomenclature and the history. And it's, it's, it's just a perverted uh, reality. So legacy is, is just nonsense. I mean, look at just the shift from classic rock and roll to rap. And now it's uh, electronic generated dance music. Mm -hmm. EDM? You can't even, you can't even. Uh, so uh, 
Is that what they call it, EDM? Yeah, there's like a lot of, yeah, variants of it, but. And uh, so uh, I don't have any, any uh, aspirations for a legacy because no one's gonna know who anybody is. I, I love your answers, man. For the time that I've been on Earth, I'm grateful that some of it was spent with you. I'm truly. Thank you, buddy. Love Appreciate and respect, it. Brian. Thank you, sir. I hope he did everything right. You had the right wires, the battery didn't run out, the sound was on, because we're not gonna fucking do this again. No, 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 I mean it. We're not gonna do it again. Shut it off. Shut it off. I gotta get out of here. I gotta go to church. Shut the fucking thing off. I gotta go to church right now. This is Black Zeus, the podcast season five. I love y'all. Thank you for supporting. Once again, the Patreon is launched. If you do want to watch my comedy special right now, you can do so. It's only 10 bucks and you can get it as part of the subscription fee. So like if you subscribe to the Patreon, you can get it that way or you can just buy it outright for 10 bucks that way. Once again, for transparency, I will release the comedy special for free on the YouTube once we hit a thousand subscribers. So you can also just hit the subscriber uh, button and just do that. You can support that way, whichever way you want to support. I'm on TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, all that. I don't necessarily use it the way everybody else does, but I'm there if you want to find me. AKA Black Zeus is the person to find on those platforms.